In this video, we're going to look at um, the first major topic in chapter 19, which is how to balance redox reactions in acidic media. So there's two parts to this. We're going to learn how to first, in the first video, uh, learn how to balance reactions in acidic media. Then we're going to learn how to balance reactions in basic media. And it turns out, though, that this process, um, it, the acidic media has a bunch of steps, and then if it asks you to do it in basic media, there's a couple of more add-on steps that you would do at the very end to, to balance it in base. So we're going to look at the steps for acidic media. Now you'll notice I have all the steps in a slide um, here. I can't keep the slide up as I'm going through the, the actual question. So what we're going to do is we're going to, um, I, what I'm going to do is I'm going to suggest that you print this out. So print out this page, uh, Steps for Balancing Redox Reactions, and, um, and then have it. And then as I go through it, you can look at the page um, and see what I'm doing relative to those steps. So let's look at the first. Uh, let's look at the first uh, question that involves uh, balancing redox reactions in acidic solution. Um, so what you're going to get is you're going to basically get an equation. It's going to say something like I2 plus NO3 minus gives IO3 minus plus NO2. So let's start with the steps. So the first one is it says I assign oxidation numbers to all the atoms present and uh, in the solution, and then identify reactants that are oxidized and which are reduced. So let's do that first. So if we look at I, I2 solid, this is going to get an oxidation number of zero because it's an, element in its, uh, in, it's an element in its standard state. So that gets a zero. Now for the NO3 minus, um, we've got O, which is a two minus, and we've got three of them. So that gives us six minus. And then we have an overall minus charge, so this is going to give us a plus 5 charge on the N. So if you, if you don't remember how to do this, you have to go back to Chapter 4 and look at how to do what the rules are for assigning oxidation numbers. And then for IO3 minus, we have uh, 3 times minus 2 is minus 6. And then we have a minus 1, so we get a plus 5 oxidation state on the uh, I. And then for the nitrogen, we have a plus four oxidation state because we have two O2 minus. So if we look at this, our iodine, our iodine is being oxidized, is being oxidized to um, the plus five oxidation state, and our nitrogen in the nitrate is being reduced to the from plus five to plus four. So this one is going to be our ox and this one is going to be our red. Okay, so um, that's, that, that's, that's how we do that. So now the second step is to um, split them into half reactions. So that's what we're going to do right now. So we have I2 goes to IO3 minus. Um, and then we have NO3 minus goes to NO2. Um, so those are our half reactions um, that we have. So one thing that you want to do is you want to balance all of the atoms except for O and H first. So in the case of nitrogen, the nitrogens are already balanced. So that one's easy. But for the, the uh, one that involves iodine, that one is not balanced. We have two iodines on the, the left and we only have one on the right. So we're going to put a two there first. And that's going to get our iodines balanced. Now, it says balance the oxygen atoms by adding H2O molecules to one side of the equation. So if you look on the right side, we have six oxygen atoms. We have two times three makes six oxygen atoms. So what we're going to do is we're going to add six water molecules to the left side of that reaction. Those six water molecules will now balance out the oxygens on both sides. Okay, so then step three says add H atoms by adding H plus ions to one side of the equation. So if you look, we have now 12 H atoms that are on the left and none on the right. So we're going to add those by adding 12 H plus. So um, that's how we balance the, hy the hydrogen atoms that we just added in. And then we have to balance the electrical charge. So in the last step, in 3D, we have to balance the electrical charge. So on the right, we'll notice that we have 12 positive charges on the right. And on the left, we have no charges whatsoever. So on the left, we're going to have to add in um, some electrons. 
you can see on the left we have zero charge and on the right we have a net charge of plus 10 because we have two minus charges from the IO3 minus and we have 12 positive charges from the H plus. So on this side, we're going to add 10 electrons to balance out um, our charge. So if you add up the charges on the left, we have zero charge on the left. We have two minus ones plus 12 plus ones, which gives us a net of plus 10. And then we add 10 electrons, which gives us a net of zero. So we're good. So that takes care of step three um, for the left reaction. Now let's do step three for the right reaction. So uh, our ends are already balanced. We said that before. So the thing that's the the thing the next thing we're going to balance is the oxygen. So we're going to add a water on the right side. Um, so that water now on the right side adds two hydrogen atoms that we have to account for on the left. So we're going to add two H plus to the left side. So now if we look at the right side, there is no charge. So we have to make sure that the left side has no charge. So we're going to add one electron to that uh, left side to make that work out. Because now we have the NO3 minus, uh, we have two H plus, so that gives us a net of one positive charge, and then we have one electron which gives us a net of zero charge. Okay, so we've completed step three for both half reactions. Now it says combine the half reactions into one equation. Multi multiply each half reaction by a factor so that the electrons cancel when you combine the two reactions. Okay, so on the left side, if you look, we have 10 electrons on the left. So on the right side, we have to multiply this whole thing by 10 to get the electrons to work out. So let's just go ahead and do that. So we have 10 electrons plus 2H plus, oh, I'm sorry, so see, I'm already making a mistake. So you gotta be very careful with this process. You have to multiply that by 10. So then we're gonna get 20H plus, plus 10 NO3 minus is going to give 10 NO2 plus 10 H2O. And so now we have a common number of electrons um, on the oxidation and the reduction reactions. So what we're going to do now is now we're going to add those two, those two up. And the way that I like to do this is I like to just... I, I like to just write my reactants first and then write my products second. So I'm going to pull from the left equation first my reactants. So we're going to make our combined equation here. And this is going to be long. So we're going to have 6H2O plus I2. That's from the left one. And then we're going to start pulling uh, reactants from the right one. Plus 10 electrons plus 20H plus plus 10NO3 minus and now we're going to have our products. So we're going to have 2IO3 minus plus 12H plus plus 10 electrons plus 10NO2 plus 10H2O. Okay, so we've combined everything. Now it says simplify by canceling species that appear on both sides. So let's start with the waters. So on the left side, we have six waters, and on the right side, we have 10. So we're going to get rid of those 10 waters, and in our, our new complete reaction, we're going to have just a balance of 4H2O. So we'll write the new complete reaction down below. So we've gotten rid of the waters. We made sure those work out. Um, now, let's take a look. I2, that can't cancel because there's nothing on the other side. We then have 10 electrons. That's going to cancel with the 10 electrons on the other side. Okay, so now let's do the H pluses. We have 20 H plus on the left and 12 H plus on the right. So that's going to leave a net of 8 H plus on the left. We have 10 NO3 on the left and no NO3s on the right. So now we've gone through and we've checked all of our, our different things. So what we're left with is we're left with I2 plus 8H plus, plus 10NO3 minus, gives 2IO3 minus, plus 10NO2, plus 4H2O. Now, we do have to put in phase labels, so this is an important step. 
Um, so the I2 is a solid. You get that from above. So that phase label is a solid. The H plus is going to be aqueous because it's in solution. The NO3 minus is going to be aqueous. We get that from above. The IO3 minus is going to be aqueous. We get that from the above reaction. The NO2 is a, get, a gas. We get that from the above reaction. And the H2O is going to be a liquid. And we get that just by knowing that water is a liquid. So the final balanced reaction is I2 plus 8H plus plus 10 NO3 minus gives 2 IO3 minus plus 10 NO2 gas plus 4 H2O. Now, it's really important that you guys um, practice this. This, this. These steps require practice. You just have to keep practicing and practicing and practicing until you can do this really quickly, and then you'll have it down. So these are the steps for acidic solution. In the next video, we're going to look at these steps for how to do this in basic solution. So we'll review the steps for the acidic solution, and then we'll add a couple of extra steps on at the end.